Check. Hello. Hi. Testing. This is Unravel with Videla. Unravel with Videla. Unravel with Videla. Unravel with <laughs> Hey, welcome to Unravel with Videla, a platform to discuss the business of creative and demystifying the what am I demystifying? <laughs> hey, welcome to Unravel with Videla, a platform to discuss the business of creative and demystifying the culture around it. And on today's episode, we've got a really, really special guest. It's Tipsy Soul. She's a digital nomad, travel blogger, social media extraordinaire, and she's about to share a lot of stuff with me that will just completely blow my mind. So <laughs> go ahead and drop some knowledge to us. I've got a couple of questions, but before we get started, why don't you kind of introduce yourself and share with us a little bit of your story? For sure. Hey guys, hey anyone watching this. My name's Alex Martinez, or better known as Tipsy Soul. And for the past few years, I've been living the full digital nomad life abroad and kind of doing freelancing, social media, life and everything that comes with that and it's been a crazy ride and a hell of a journey but yeah of course it has its pros and cons of, like people think oh you can travel the world and not work from an office like how rad but of course they don't see the behind the scenes of what that really entails in life and if you choose to live a full-time lifestyle traveling, then all of your money that you make goes to plane tickets and Airbnbs, and you don't really have a home base back home, like your own apartment. So it definitely has some, uh, some pros and cons, and my job is to just be as honest and raw and truthful as I can with my followers and anyone interested into how to actually cultivate that lifestyle in your career, work towards it, and know what to expect in reality. Awesome, awesome. So. So why don't you tell me, what is a digital nomad? Totally. A digital nomad, don't know the uh, Oxford Dictionary, but uh, in my eyes, it's someone that spends their time working remotely. And what's different than just a remote worker? A remote worker could be someone that works from home in their pajamas all day and doesn't actually utilize the opportunity of not having to work in an office. Maybe you're a homebody and you like to do some work from home, no big deal. Maybe you're someone that has cabin fever like me that has to travel and so you purposely seek out jobs that enable you to travel or that you can travel while doing. Awesome, awesome. I've honestly, I think this is a great thing for for people that are millennials, right, a lot of us are in this mode of like, I've just got to go, I need to go travel the world, exactly. but I just don't know how, and I have a job which keeps me, keeps me from being able to do that. Totally. So what are some of the ways that you were able to really dive into this lifestyle to be able to live in different countries and travel from country to country? Yeah. What are some of the things that you've, you've done up until this point to get there? So it kind of started at first where I knew I wanted to travel, I knew I was bored at home, and I started to think, well, I know that people can work remotely. They're doing these like mommy jobs from home all the time, blogging or working on people's Instagrams or doing web design, things like that. And I thought, why can't I do that from wherever I want? As long as I have Wi-Fi, I don't even need an actual co-working space and desk. Those are very helpful. But um, if you're kind of a low maintenance like traveler and you're down to work in I don't know, let's say you're a voice recorder and you do freelance stuff on Upwork. All you really need is your microphone, right? You work from hotel closets, you work from your car. The one thing that you need enables you to work from anywhere. So for me, that one thing is Wi-Fi. So if I have my little, you know, tech portal device or something like that, can pretty much work from wherever I want. And once I realized that, I continued traveling. Um, at first I went abroad to actually volunteer with refugees over in Eastern Europe and it completely changed my life. I was very humbled and thought, wow, this is so, this makes me feel so alive being around this community and these people and just being so far away from my culture and privilege that I didn't want to go home yet when the experience was over. So I started to try and find a few clients and I thought, what am I good at and what can I make money doing abroad? And my first thought initially was social media. I can run people's Instagrams for them. I can create them content. I can create a calendar and give them um, special optimization tactics for growth. And all of these things that I realized in my identity capital, once you really kind of create an identity capital for yourself, what are you good at? What comes naturally and effortlessly for you? For me, it was being on Instagram. 
So I know that there are some potentially older business owners that don't know about Instagram or don't have the time or care to be on their phones to try and promote their product or brand or you know, really spread the word and market their business. So they're going to younger people. They're going to millennials right, to right. do this for them. So I started to get a few little clients together and built up my business. It was my first time being an entrepreneur and what drove me the whole time in this new journey was the fact that I knew I wasn't ready to go home yet and I wanted to keep traveling the world. So how can I find money to sustain my travels and pretty much just look at what you're good at doing and if it's something you can do remotely, even better. Wow, wow, that's great. So something that I'm personally wondering is surely a lot of companies that may be seeking out someone to handle their social media or their Instagram or create a website for them would want somebody present, right? True. What do you do in order to kind of combat that concern in order to win over the business? Yeah, so it's kind of this new thing, right? There haven't been many studies about what is better output of having a remote worker or an in-house worker. But from what I personally know, and of course I might be biased, it actually saves your the employer time and money to hire out-of-house service and freelancers and people around the world. Let's just think, first of all, if you're only limiting yourself to find workers for your company within your small town or wherever you live in that mile radius, you're actually delimiting your opportunities for global talent mm -hmm. around the world. And people talk about this all the time on Upwork or different freelance sites yeah. where the actual pricing and rates for freelancers is sometimes getting devalued because employers are finding people to do it really, really cheap around the world, let's right. just say in different countries. Yeah. So if some person in a different country is saying, I'll do this for $5 an hour, but I won't do it for less than 25, this is where it kind of comes in and gets a little bit difficult. Right. But the basic thing to remind an employer if you're trying to convince them that you can do the work remotely, first of all, you have to actually be able to do it, right? You have to hit deadlines, you know, execute tasks. That means if that team and your team has a meeting at 5 a.m. in whatever country that you're in, you better wake up and be on that call. Those are just sacrifices that you right. have to make. Um, Another thing is, when people hire remote workers, they skip out time and paying training to do traditional onboarding in an office, right? Another thing, when you're in an office and it's like someone's birthday, classic, you know, thing on The Office, the show, and it's yeah. someone's birthday and you go to this like stupid little party for 20 minutes, that's actually taking away from the time that the person could be working, correct, that you're paying your employee for. So if you're a remote worker, you're not just creating your own birthday party on your hours working for your business and employer. Yeah. You only work when you feel productive. So that employer is getting a better bang for their buck by giving you the freedom and trust to complete those tasks and, and do your work remotely. So yeah, it's kind of yeah. hard to say that to someone like, just trust me, I can do it from anywhere. Yeah, but if you yeah. really can and can kind of come up in a better way to verbalize that than yeah. I just did, um, if your employer is keen and open to that, it really is powerful, the, how much money they save, how much time they save. And when you're forced to be in an office working and you're not feeling good in those two hours, let's say like you have cramps or a cold or something, you're not gonna be working at, with high productivity and output. Whereas if you are a remote worker, it's like, okay, I'm feeling good, I'm going to the co-working space from four to seven and I'm gonna complete yeah. this project. You're choosing when and where you wanna work from and you're putting in better output. Got it, Input. Got it. And getting better output. And getting better output. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I've, I've never heard it explained so well like that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Cool. So now in thinking about that, let's just say you were brought on under the capacity of I'm cool with remote work, but I don't necessarily want someone that's more or less a freelancer that's on their own, but really a working member of the team, totally. just somewhere else. And it doesn't matter where you are around the world, yeah. but a working member of the team. Um, yes, like I can completely understand that there is time and money put into like, like the office party, or, like the office birthday party. Um, but as far as the reason why those things are in place is to have this sense of community across exactly. the team. Um, and of course, if someone's just not there, that can be missed. 
Totally. Um, so as far as productivity and morale, um, it definitely does help having that sense of working together with, with the team and getting to getting a chance to know your, your team on a personal basis. Very true. And if you are kind of that lone wolf person and you know you're going to execute your tasks remotely, you probably will be missing out on that company culture, right? Those inside jokes, those memories that your employers are developing with the rest of their team. Good ways to stay connected is it sounds annoying sometimes for remote workers, but even when you're not in your working hours, just checking the company's Slack, checking yeah. your Bitrix 24, all those different communication tools and platforms that businesses use to keep their you know, remote little workers out in the world yeah. connected. Um, being a part and being present of your company even when you're not working or on vacation is what's gonna matter the most. Also things like taking time out of your life if you have time and the luxury to just schedule one-on-ones with the yeah. other people in your team. When I first joined one of my companies, it was a complete remote team with a company called Unsettled. We would each have one-on-ones weekly with other people in our team just to not even talk about work, but to get to know that person. Because right. at the end of the day, whether they're working in Bali or India or Thailand or Canada, we still have to kind of come together for some projects, right? right. So I'm not going to go, hey, Mr. Uh, Bali dude, yeah. I need you to do this for me. Yeah. It's like, hey, Miguel, like, I actually know you. Remember yeah. we talked last week and had virtual beers together? You know, yeah. things like that. <laughs> yeah, that I've done sense. it. Like, had a glass of wine with my coworker around the world where we both just kind of, like, vent or bitch about something together. Yeah. There are ways to keep yourself a part of the community while you are remote. And I guess that really depends on how social you are, even if you are like an introverted person, making that effort will have the employer be more proud of you and want to keep you on board longer. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. So what is the most difficult thing about being a digital nomad? I mean, have you run into situations where it's like, oh my gosh, this is not as glamorous as I thought this would be. Totally. <laughs> and I just, I, I just want to quit. Has there been that point for you? And obviously you're still, I mean, you're still doing it. You know, you probably wouldn't have it any other way, but at some point there had to have been like a breaking point where it's yes. like, okay, I'm really questioning my decisions right now, so. <laughs> yeah, you will go through like, identity crisis as a digital nomad wondering, can I really sustain myself? Is this really the right thing to do? I guess kind of for me, the biggest challenge is having guilt of missing out on my home culture, my family, my friends, my pets. So I've created the luxury for myself of making sure I've worked hard to be able to go back and visit home every couple months. So maybe I work remotely three months from a different continent and then I'll pop back to the States and stay with my family for one month. And I'll switch and do that every season pretty much. So the biggest thing for me is that FOMO of missing out. But then whenever I am home, I have the FOMO of missing out on the world and yeah. adventures and opportunities and new people to meet and new culture to just immerse myself in and new food to try. So acknowledging that that challenge will be there, that fear, but what's more important to you? Are you someone that would rather stay in your hometown and work and be in an office setting and you really value community? Or are you more kind of that adventurer that has that typical case of wanderlust that wants to see the world. You're young, you're in your 20s, mid 20s, you are an entrepreneur, you are a professional, and think, hey, this is probably the only time I can do this before I have a family and settle down. So why not do this in my 20s? Why not work remotely, bust my ass off, see as much of the world as I can, and then come home? Because home will always be there for you when you go back. Um, I hope that made sense. That's definitely my biggest challenge, yeah, and like yeah. a pain point sometimes, because you know, you are gonna miss your friend's birthdays. Maybe you have to question, shit, do I need to buy a thousand dollar plane ticket home next month for that friend's wedding? What's more important? You're gonna have to really place value into your boundaries and values yourself. Like, what's more important for me right now? And if, if that answer is traveling, you'll find ways to make it work. Okay, yeah, I think, what I'm getting from that is that it requires you to really prioritize and compartmentalize almost a lot of things in your life. Totally. Um, and if you aren't able to do that, then you will find yourself just going back home and staying home. Exactly. You'll be on vacation working somewhere in a beautiful beach far off in the east and think, wow, this is great, but I'm really lonely. Or yeah. I'm glad that I did this, but now I did it. I conquered it. I fulfilled that need within me. That travel bug is satiated and full, and you want to go home. So 
it's obviously case by case um, and different for each person and your, your desires, but it's something to definitely be aware of when deciding whether to go remote or not. But at the same time, I always encourage everyone to at least try. If you land a remote job or can talk your employer into working remote, even if it's for two months, like yeah. maybe you'll feel it out and say, yeah, I can sustain this, I dig it. And maybe people only work for one year remote out of their whole career and just kind of yeah. take it as that structured sabbatical, you know, to see the world and still make money, not break the bank. But maybe after a while you realize, it's not sustainable forever. It's really just yeah. up to you. Because you'll see like 50 year old expats like in Chiang Mai, Thailand, like web developers that spent their whole life in Thailand. Yeah. So it, it just depends on who you are. For sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah, hope that helps. So my last question for you was, where is the most interesting place that you've ever been? <laughs> and second part of that question, where's one place that you'd really like to go? Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like that answer changes so much, um, <laughs> but Today, I will choose, um, oh, I will probably choose Slovenia. So Slovenia is a beautiful country. It has the kindest people, delicious food. It's just recently went through like a war in the 90s. Um, obviously, Yugoslavia splitting up. They have a really interesting culture, um, very into their politics complete different widespread religions of like Islam, Judaism, Christianity, all in one place, kind of what led to their war, and covered in beautiful coastal seaside. So that's kind of why I really love it. It yeah. borders Austria, Croatia, and Italy. So you'll have all these weird influences of like Eastern European, but then like Italian, and, yeah. and it comes through in their foods, in the people's personalities. So Slovenia, number one place I'd like to see that I haven't gone yet, uh, Peru. I would say Peru. Okay. I really want to do the Sacred Valley and Machu Picchu, and I'm a big sucker for ceviche, so <laughs> that's, that's next up. on my list. Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that pretty much covers the questions I want to go over cool. with you. I feel like if I wanted to do this tomorrow, I feel like I... I know, know totally. what to do in order to start out. That's yeah. awesome. Thank and you I, so much. Thank you. I always offer, if anyone's thinking about working remotely or wants to kind of just talk it through and have someone that understands those challenges and that's been there, feel free to reach out. I would love to talk to you. I How think do that, I reach out to you? Sure. Um, what we'll do, I guess, is put in the link below yeah. just some details for you to reach out. But tipsysoul.com or tipsysoul on Instagram, feel free to reach out on one of those. I really believe that everyone should try working remotely if you're interested, just to see how it goes. So I really encourage that. And thank you for your time and listening. I hope that this inspired you or helped you or gave you some answers or just made you think about something you never thought about before. So thanks, Videla, and thanks, everyone watching. That's what's up. Thanks for unraveling with us. Bye. Peace.